Thanks to Babbel, a language learning app, for supporting this SciShow video. As a SciShow viewer, you can use our link to grow your language skills with Babbel for up to 60% off with a 20-day money-back guarantee. You might call it ringing in the ears. If you have it, you might also call it a pain in the butt. Doctors call it tinnitus or tinnitus. And right after that, they usually add and I'm afraid there's not much I can do about it. You're basically hearing a sound that isn't there, which doesn't lend itself to any obvious treatment strategies, unless we could uh, trick your brain into not hearing a fake sound? No, really, that actually seems to work. And it could mean relief for millions of people. Here's how. Tinnitus is the seemingly phantom perception of various sounds, including ringing, roaring, or buzzing, when there is nothing outside of the body creating sound waves that travel to the ear. It's more a set of symptoms than a disease, per se, and what causes it in a particular patient may not always be clear. Tinnitus symptoms are thought to affect at least 10% of the world's population, and for some, those symptoms can seriously affect quality of life. It often accompanies hearing loss and may be part of the progression of hearing loss, though that varies from person to person. Contributing factors range from occupational exposure to noise to head or neck injuries to too much earwax. Certain folks may also have a genetic predisposition contributing to their symptoms. But while we're coming to a better understanding of the causes, actual treatments have been tough to come by. Doctors have sometimes dismissed patients with these symptoms, sometimes implying that it's all in the person's head, which technically correct, but that still makes you a jerk. Even providers who do take tinnitus seriously have had limited options to offer. These include a combination of psychotherapy and sound therapies. The psychotherapy was for the distress that some people with tinnitus symptoms experience, not for reducing the actual noises. And the sound therapies that some doctors have recommended so far are approved for other conditions, not tinnitus itself. Meaning there's very little that's been available to address the the root cause of the symptoms. So people with tinnitus have kind of been on their own to deal with the sometimes debilitating toll on concentration, memory, and sleep, which can trigger or worsen anxiety or depression. Though it's been described as a particularly elusive set of symptoms to unravel, our understanding of tinnitus has improved. And it appears the key to treatment may be in using senses in addition to hearing to hack people's brains. In the past decade or so, doctors and researchers have increasingly noticed that some patients can modulate their tinnitus by moving or applying pressure to their head, neck, face, or other parts that don't have to do directly with hearing. These people have what's referred to as somatosensory, or somatic tinnitus. They're not quite sure how it all works, but basically, it's like people can listen to another sense. That sounds kind of unreal, because typically, we think of each of our senses as separate. Sight and touch, for instance, have their own processes to convey information through their different sensory organs to the brain. But our sensory systems are more more integrated than that. It's more like an interconnected web that brings all the different kinds of information we can perceive together and sends it to our brains. Knowing that patients could sometimes improve their symptoms by crossing their own sensory wires, researchers started chasing the idea as a lead to better understanding of tinnitus. Several studies in the 2010s looked at animals, including guinea pigs, who were exposed to excess noise to induce tinnitus. Their results suggested that whatever causes tinnitus also causes changes to the strength and connection between the cells in the brainstem. Eventually, scientists figured out that a lot of this is going on in the dorsal cochlear nucleus, or DCN, a layered structure in the brainstem. In mammals, this area is the first site where inputs of sound that hit the ear come together with inputs of touch and other bodily sensations in the head and neck. Scientists still have a lot to learn about this structure, but they know that the DCN doesn't only receive and convey these inputs. It also plays a key role 
in processing them. Those animal studies showed that something was specifically happening in a part of the DCN called the fusiform cell circuit. This group of neurons is one of the final sites in the DCN that processes inputs before sending them on their way to be perceived. In animals with tinnitus, the fusiform cells had dialed up neural connections and increased activity, which seems like the source of the phantom noise. Researchers at the University of Michigan pulled all this together in a double-blind, randomized clinical trial involving 99 participants with somatic tinnitus. They published their results in the journal JAMA Network Open in June of 2023. They hypothesized that a well-timed combination of sound and touch could dial back that extra activity in the fusiform cell circuit. This would go further than previous therapies and actually turn down the volume of the sounds experienced by people with tinnitus. Trial participants wore a type of headset dealio that delivered a combination of both sounds and vibrations using electrodes placed on the neck or head for 30 minutes at a time. Participants in the control group received only sounds, but everybody in the study got to trade places and be in the treatment group part of the time. Over half of the participants receiving both vibrations and sounds showed a significant reduction in the distress caused by symptoms, as well as the volume of the sounds. Basically, this treatment intentionally throws a wrench at the part of the brain that coordinates sensory signals. Well, that doesn't sound like something you'd normally want to do, it was for a good reason, and it worked for more than half the participants. What's even better is that the treatment effect persisted even after participants were no longer using the headset thingy every day. The team at the University of Michigan says that their results are promising and represent hope for people with tinnitus. Since this trial has concluded, the researchers are keen to move quickly through the approval process to get their device to market. So yeah, it goes to show that just because something is all in someone's head, or somewhere between their ears and brains in particular, that doesn't mean that it's not real. Here's hoping that soon, instead of patients having to just deal with tinnitus, doctors will be able to turn down these frustrating sounds with some literal good vibes. If you're looking for other ways to hack your brain, you can try tricking yourself into learning an entirely new language by just spending 10 minutes at a time on it. That's how Babbel works. You know, the number one language learning app in the world. After three weeks, you could be speaking Norwegian or Portuguese or Indonesian. And after two months, you could start speaking all three. Imagine walking into any room in the world and being able to understand what people are saying. Babbel sets you on your way to actually having that superpower. As a SciShow viewer, you can get up to 60% off when you sign up using the link in the description below. You can choose from different subscriptions, including a lifetime subscription. Babbel also offers live classes, and you can get two free classes with your subscription. Thanks to Babbel for supporting this SciShow video.